Yaz, and I have a special word for you today from the Lord. That's right, a word from the Lord. He swung by this morning, pulled up, came in, sat down with me. We had a cup of coffee. We, you know, asked, how you doing? He said he's doing great. He's a little bit mad about a couple things, but overall he's well. And then he shared a word with me, and I thought I'd share it with all of you. All right, well, he didn't stop by personally, but yesterday the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I'm going to share with you what I wrote on Facebook because unfortunately, when the Lord gives you something and you write it down because it's not of yourself, like if Lindley Oz wrote it, it would be confusing and all over the place. So I cannot share this with you just as perfectly as what he did. I'm noticing a lot of people who are partaking in the worldly rebellion that's taking place. We have something called nationalism and we have the new apostolic reformation movement, dominionist evangelicals to thank for that, where we totally forget about what Jesus said. And instead we do what the flesh wants to do. Now, is it wrong to be angry and upset about things that are taking place and about our freedoms being taken from us? The fact that we see evil taking over, we see unjust acts happening all over the place. Is it wrong? No. I just want to make that clear. It's not wrong that we feel angered and upset by this. However, as Christians, we can't let our flesh lead us. We have to follow Jesus, okay? Like following the leader. Jesus is our leader. We don't allow that flesh to guide us and to lead us. The Bible says it's a constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. We walk in the spirit. We don't walk according to the desires of the flesh. Again, I understand because... These things are wrong that are happening and it's in our nature that we want to defend. We want to get even. We want justice. Look at the book of Psalms. Look at King David crying out for justice. How many people throughout history have cried out for justice? But what was God's response? God's response was vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Vengeance belongs to God. We are his servants. So we have to separate the flesh from the spirit. And we have to walk according to the spirit. So let me go ahead and share with you what I posted on Facebook. I'm sorry for sitting here and reading to you. But like I said, I cannot even begin to try to share this with you. The way it was so perfectly written when the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. Before I share this, let's go over real quick what rebellion is. I researched biblical definitions of rebellion. This one comes from Got Questions. What does the Bible say about rebellion? It says, rebellion is opposition to authority. Rebellion can become violent as in an armed rebellion broke out in the city. But it can also remain unexpressed. Rebellion always begins in the heart. Rebellion against God's authority was humanity's first sin. Genesis 3, 
and continues to be our downfall. Our sinful natures do not want to bow to the authority of another, even God. We want to be our own bosses, and that rebellion in the human heart is the root of all sin. Romans 3.23 Rebellion against proper authority is a serious matter in God's eyes. The prophet Samuel confronted King Saul with these words, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. That can be found in 1 Samuel 15, 22, and 23. Rebellion is linked to pride in this passage, and both sins are equated with witchcraft and paganism. Because of Saul's persistent rebellion against God, he lost the throne and his royal dynasty was cut short. God gave the kingdom to a shepherd boy named David. Within human civilization, God has also established a chain of command and rebellion against God's ordained order is sin. Romans chapter 13, 1 through 7 instructs us to submit ourselves to the governing authorities as long as those authorities do not require us to disobey the authority of God, Acts 5, 29. Rebellion against righteous authority leads to anarchy and the dissolution of society. In the home, God's chain of authority is that the husband, for example, is to be the head of the family. The husband's responsibility is to lead his family in submitting to Christ. The wife is to submit to her husband, and children are to obey their parents. Rebellion against familial authority also leads to chaos and dysfunction within the home, for example. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here because I want to get on with the word the Lord gave to me. Every human heart has the seed of rebellion germinating deep within. We are rights fighters. And is that not what this battle right now we're seeing is about? Our rights. What is mine? My rights. What is owed to me? What I deserve? We are rights fighters. And when we believe someone is not respecting our rights, we rebel. Learning to appeal to authority is one way to avoid rebellion and still find a resolution to a problem. Creative thinking is another way we can channel our passion for change into productive avenues. Offering solutions in respectful ways invites our authorities to consider options they may not have discovered without our input. Daniel's dealings with the Babylonian official is a fine example of showing respect and avoiding rebellion, and you can find that in Daniel chapter 1, verses 8 through 16. While adherence to truth often requires challenging those in authority, outright rebellion against any God-ordained authority is rarely sanctioned by him. So the question is then, our government. Well, we know our government is evil. We know it's Luciferian, owned and operated. The beast system is owned by the Jesuits, okay? So the seven mountains of the seven mountain mandate of the new apostolic reformation movement. If you don't know who that is, watch my documentary called The False Prophet. It's too much information to answer if you leave me a comment asking me. But that seven mountain mandate that they are established on is the global beast system, the educational system finance and the economy and so forth. For this time, until Jesus Christ returns and builds his kingdom on this earth, God has given authority or dominion to Satan and the kingdom of hell to operate and function in the worldly government system. That's how we end up seeing the beast of the book of Revelation and so forth. Why? Because God is going to bring justice to his people, and God will come and judge the sinners. He will judge Satan and the demons and the principalities, and eventually they're all going to be booted into the lake of fire where they belong. In order to do that, all these wicked, evil, horrible things have to happen to bring that justice. There's nothing in the Bible that says this is not going to happen. There's nothing that says we can just pray it away 
and it'll go away. No, the Bible does not lie. We are given the book of Revelation for a reason. Okay, so trying to rebel is not God's way. Now, as you heard me clearly read in the definition I just shared with you, if someone asks you to do something that is unbiblical, that is different. Okay, but what I'm seeing is a whole bunch of people wanting to get mixed into this worldly rebellion and getting even. People want justice. And let me remind you, we have feelings, we have emotions, we know right from wrong. And I understand because it makes me angry too. However, again, that's where we have to separate the flesh from the spirit. We obey Jesus. You either obey Jesus or you don't. You're either a Christian or you're not. Don't call yourself a Christian if you don't know what Jesus has asked of you to do, or better, what Jesus has commanded you to do, because you're not really a Christian if you're going to hear the words of Jesus Christ himself, and you're going to deny those words, thus calling him a liar, because that's what you're doing when you sit there and say, nope, I'm not going to listen. Now you're rebelling against God. If you're going to take the words of the book called the Holy Bible, Jesus' own words himself, and you're going to deny them and do what you want to do anyways, then you are not truly picking up your cross and carry it. Yes, it's a real, real picking up of a cross. Let me tell you, to take and separate the flesh from the spirit. When you see injustice happening, when you see the injustice of babies being butchered by abortionists every single day, that is unjust. When you see innocent children victimized, when you see the Luciferian government involved in child sacrifice, witchcraft, and all this stuff, the occult, that is injustice. When you see innocent people that are being tormented and scorned and ridiculed each and every day, that is injustice. Jesus had to go die on the cross for us so that we could have eternal life. But he was innocent. That was injustice. Did he stand up and start wielding the sword and killing people? Did he argue? He didn't say a word. He was quiet. Jesus is our ultimate example. Look at the disciples. All of them except for John the Revelator. Well, John the Revelator was boiled alive in oil, but God gave him special protection and it didn't kill him. But all of the disciples except for John the Revelator were all martyred for the truth. One of them, as he was hanging on the cross for an extended period of time before he died suffering, witnessed to those who are putting him to death. That's right. Stephen. Stephen in the Bible. He was stoned to death. He didn't fight. He's having boulder rocks thrown at his head for crying out loud. He had the glory of God on his face. He didn't sit there and start cussing and screaming and yelling and fighting and flailing about. Our example, folks, is in the Bible. Am I saying that we're supposed to be little wimps? No. We are to be as bold as a lion wise as a serpent and humble as a lamb. So how do you do that? How is it possible to be wise as a serpent, bold as a lion and humble as a lamb? I'll tell you who's a great example of that. The apostle Paul You can read his writings in the Bible. Start reading the Bible. It will fill you up. It will teach you. It'll become natural. It'll just soak into your spirit you will begin to reflect the words of Jesus Christ in your daily walk as you read the words from the Holy Bible. So let me go ahead and share with you what the Holy Spirit gave to me to share. I wrote, everyone promoting patriotic rebellion right now, let's look at what God's word has to say about this. As a follower of the truth of God's word and one who leads the sheep, I cannot be with any of you promoting this. I must stand on the truth of God's word and never deviate. Unfortunately, I'm seeing a lot of leaders, people who do what I do, for example, 
Maybe they don't have videos. They could just lead on Facebook. I don't know. But people who do what I do, who are promoting this rebellion over rights. Do you know, technically speaking, according to the Bible, we as Christians, because our home is not of this world. Our home is in heaven with the Lord. Our home is not here. This flesh that we live in right now, it belongs to the earth. Our spirit belongs to our heavenly father. Our spirit belongs to Jesus Christ, but the flesh belongs to the earth. So you see, when you get all angry and you think my rights, my rights, that's the rights of your flesh. Yes, those are the rights of your flesh. They are not the rights of your spirit because your spirit does not belong here. So if you want to serve your flesh, that's fine. Then turn off this message right now. It's not for you. If that's what you've decided you want to do and you want to serve the ways of your flesh, your flesh has rights and your flesh every day decays and your flesh returns to the dust. And if you don't know Jesus Christ and you do not obey him, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your body and all your mind, obey him. You can't call yourself a Christian but rebel against God. Because when you rebel, unless you're asked to do something unbiblical, you are rebelling directly against God who placed within our realm that we dwell in powers and authorities, even though they're evil. Okay, I want you all to understand that. Yes, these things are unjust and unfair to our flesh, but we don't walk in the flesh. We are not of the flesh. Our home is not here in this world where our flesh is presently. Eventually, when Jesus Christ returns and builds the kingdom on this earth and we have a new body, a brand new body, okay, then... Our kingdom will be here in this world when the new Jerusalem comes down, okay? All right, let's get back to the word. Jesus Christ is and was our role model in all things. I think that we should defend the word of God at this time and preach the message of salvation. We are living in the book of Revelation. It will get worse. Fighting for our eternal soul and the eternal souls of our loved ones and praying for the lost is by far more important and relevant than fighting for what goes to the dust to be trampled beneath the feet of the wicked. Until Jesus returns and establishes the kingdom of heaven here, dominion has been given to Satan in this world government. So evil will continue to be evil until the time. What matters now is not the things of the flesh, but the things of the spirit. Jesus is coming, folks. Jesus is coming. We are right at the end. We are out of time. So what matters? Do the things that are going to be trampled underfoot by humans that go to dust matter? No. What matters is Jesus Christ and the message of salvation and the gospel of Jesus Christ. The battle belongs to the Lord. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Our job is to repent wash our robes, gather the harvest, and do his work. Those with an ear to hear will hear these words, and those who do not have an ear to hear will refuse to listen. Folks, we must at this time remember the ways of Jesus Christ. We won't change the corrupt government. Where does it say we will in the Bible? It doesn't. It only says Jesus after it's destroyed, comes and establishes his kingdom. We won't change the corrupt government, but we can follow the example of Christ Jesus and be witnesses for the truth. I just want to advise you all out of love to please be very careful to not get mixed into the rebellion of the world system right now. Our job is the testimony of Christ Jesus and salvation and preaching the truth and sharing the gospel. Jesus didn't take on Rome or Caesar. He went to the people. We can stand against hell by doing what the Bible tells us to do. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. This battle is not against flesh and blood. Furthermore, see here Jesus' own words. Let me share them with you. It comes from Luke chapter 6, the Beatitudes. And turning his gaze... 
toward his disciples, he began to say, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and ostracize you and insult you and scorn your name as evil for the sake of the Son of Man. Be glad in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Did you get that? Leap for joy and be glad. Boy, I get hated and scorned, ridiculed each and every day. It tells us to leap for joy and be glad. It doesn't say whip out your gun and start firing. It doesn't say get your fist out and start punching. It doesn't say to go out and vandalize. It doesn't say to go out and be like the world and do unto them what they've done unto you. In fact, the Bible says to do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Be glad in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way their fathers used to treat the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you are receiving your comfort in full. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for their fathers used to treat the false prophets in the same way. Verse 27, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever hits you on the cheek, offer on the other also. And whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount. But love your enemies, love your enemies, and do good and lend expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Jesus' own words. Can't deny them. They're there. Go look them up. Again, that was Luke chapter 6. How can we uphold the activities and desires of the flesh, yet calling ourselves Christians? We are no longer flesh, but spirit in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Any form of rebellion is witchcraft and evil, unless you are asked to do something that goes against the word of God. We already discussed that in the article I shared from Got Questions. As Christians, we stand on the truth, don't we? If you're a Christian out there watching this, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, we stand on the truth of God's word. We do not lie against the truth or deny it, else we call God a liar. I am seeing a whole bunch of sisters and brothers and even leaders stirring up and engaging in what I call nationalist rebellion. It's mi mixing nationalism with Christianity, and this cannot be. You cannot mix the two. Folks, it's like mixing oil with water. It doesn't mix. The oil just separates from the water. You can't mix the two. That's what happens when you try to mix nationalism with Christianity. Please seek the Lord on this and pray about it. See what the word of God says for yourself. We won't change the demonic government. God gave dominion of the world of governments to Satan until Jesus Christ returns. But we can do what Jesus did and reach the people. In other words, there's nothing biblical to support the fact that we will have an impact on this world government 
here, especially in these end times. So you're just wasting time when you could be out doing what Jesus did, reaching the people. But everyone wants someone else to do it, even if it means doing things and supporting things that are very unbiblical, but disguised as good, such as meddling in the world beast system that Satan was given dominion over for this hour. We as the true disciples of Jesus Christ need to reach the broken, the hurting, the unrighteous, the unsaved, the poor, the drug addicts, the alcoholics, the murderers, the sorcerers, the thieves, the liars, etc. That is what Jesus did. He did not go to Caesar. He went to the lost themselves. It's time to stop trying to win the government. You won't. This is unbiblical. What does the Bible reveal about our future and our present? Anyone read Jesus's words in Matthew chapter 24 or the book of Revelation? What does it say? Anyone read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20? How are we told to fight? It says our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers from hell, principalities and, and evil and wickedness in high places, spiritual wickedness in high places. How are we told to fight? Prayer, be a witness, witness, testify the word of God, our salvation, the Holy Spirit, preach, reach out, support those who are teaching truth. Get into your Bible hardcore. Pray for wisdom and understanding. You want to go shoot something? Start firing at the devil with the word of God like Jesus Christ, Paul, and many others told us to do. You're so gun hungry. You want to go shoot? Do it the way Jesus said to do it. Do it using the word of God. I don't mean hold a gun in your hand and the Bible and the other folks. I mean your weapon is the word of God, not your gun. Instead of trying to win the satanic government, Jesus will destroy all of that and build his own kingdom when he returns. We must do what Jesus did and win the hearts of the people. After all, he is our example. The world powers will soon be all destroyed by Christ. Trying to do that ourselves is unbiblical, rebellious, and very against the words and instructions of Jesus Christ. If you call yourself a Christian... Jesus is whom you follow. He is our commander, our king, and we obey him. His marching orders are found in the pages of your Bible. Read it. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Choose this day whom you shall serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. That was the word the Lord gave to me, and I see this video's getting a little bit long. You can take it or leave it. Words of Jesus there, straight out of the Bible, folks. This is not our fight. What you see going on around you is not our fight. It is futile to engage. It is rebellious. It is rebellion against God. We are commanded to fight the way Jesus told us to fight, the way the Bible tells us to fight. Our battle is not of this world. Our home is not of this world. Okay, so once we give our life to Jesus, we don't have rights. Why? Because we no longer own our life. We gave it to God through his son, Jesus Christ. It is not our life anymore. Did you think about that when you gave your life to Jesus Christ? Did you truly accept that within your heart? I know it's so hard these days to not get caught up in the flesh, especially when we have a gazillion sisters and brothers doing it. My friends, don't be led by your flesh. Yes, it's unfair. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it makes us angry, even righteously angry, to see injustice. But what did God say? Vengeance is mine. Who brings our justice? Jesus Christ. We will not receive justice in this world. Did Jesus receive justice? No. Did the disciples receive justice? No. It's not about what our rights are. 
if you're a Christian. It's all about Jesus Christ and what he expects and what he wants you to do. Is Jesus your commander? Do you get your marching orders from him? Or have you made your commander this world, the devil? Because it can't be both. It's one or the other. You're either in all the way with God Almighty through his son, Jesus Christ, or you're not. And if you're not, then your commander in chief is the devil. If you want to continue to rebel like the rest of the world, don't call yourself a Christian. If you hear these words and you continue to deny the truth, you're calling God a liar because this is straight out of the Bible, straight up truth. If you choose to rebel against God, then you have made your commander in chief, Satan. And we know what his end is. And if you choose to follow Satan, well, we know what your end will be too. I'm tired of people sitting there calling themselves Christians. What does the Bible say? One of the Ten Commandments is not to take the name of God in vain. Do you realize when you call yourself a Christian, but you live like the devil, you are taking the name of the Lord in vain. You're loosely calling yourself a Christian. This cannot be. It is time to repent for this. If you have been involved in this, go repent. Ask the Lord to forgive you. He will. Do not partake in it any further. People, time is so short right now. There are people who will never get a second chance. There are people dying right now on their way to hell. There are people who are going to see the flames and fires of hell forever and ever and ever. That is what matters. There are people who need to repent. There are people living in sin. There are people that don't know the love of Jesus, but if they did, they would never want the things of this world again. There are people living in bondage to fear, to drugs, to alcohol, to sex, to homelessness, to pornography, homosexuality, you name it. What does the Bible say? It says none of those sorts of people will be in heaven. That is what it says. Adulterers, fornicators, liars, etc., etc., will have their place in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Those people will never, ever, ever, ever have a second chance. The only chance they have is right here and right now. Instead, we are too busy partaking in the world's rebellion and the world's problems. The world's problems are not our problems. They are the problems of our flesh, yes, but we don't walk in the flesh. This fleshly body is part of the world. Our spirit belongs to God. So these things don't matter. They don't matter. Why are we fighting for what goes to the dust? Fight instead for what will either spend eternity in darkness and in hell or what spends eternity forever in heaven with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Fight the good fight. That is the fight. Our weapons are not of this world. Our weapons are not carnal. The weapons we fight with are listed in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, etc., etc., etc. Go read it. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. That's our weapons, people. Prayer, praise and worship, the word of God. Use your mouth to glorify Jesus. Use your fingers as you type really fast to glorify the Lord. Get out of Babylon before it's too late. Time is up. We're at the end. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see clearly what's happening and where we are at? The world is fading away before us. We have little time. I warned you last fall and I didn't know what it was. In fact, it was less than a month before coronavirus made the news in China, I warned you that God woke me up and he said a season of suffering was coming, demonic persecution, and that something really bad was coming, and that we were in the season of fall falling away, but winter came quickly, and I was in the spirit, 
And I, I said, folks, we don't have time. Winter's coming quickly. Death. I said, something's getting ready to happen. Repent. Get right with the Lord. I said, I don't know if it's plagues or earthquakes. I don't know what it is. But it's something really bad is like right upon us. I said that to you. How many of you listened? And here we are. Heed my warning. We are in the season of winter. We are at the end. We are standing on the precipice of eternity. Standing on the precipice. You can look down and get scared. You can look back behind you and choose to run and follow the ways of evil. Or you can look up heavenward and you can trust in the Lord that he's going to carry you across that gap to the other side safely. So what is it going to be? You're going to look down and live in fear because a lot of times if people are standing on a precipice of a high place and they start getting afraid, all right, they end up falling. If you look back, your enemy is approaching. You will be killed. You can look back, turn back, go into the life of sin, join them. Or as I said, you can look upward, heavenward to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that you have called Savior, and you can trust him to carry you safely across to the other side. It is all up to you. There will be hardships. You will have to lean on the Lord, your God. You will have to trust in him. It's not going to be easy. Since when has it been easy for God's people? But God has never turned his back on his people, nor shall he. He will be there with you to the very end. But you have to trust him. You have to lean on him. You have to spend time in his word. You have to worship him and give him praise and sing to him and praise. Use the book of Psalms. There's power in it. Praise however you want. But you want extra power. There is power in the book of Psalms. I did a video on that. Spend time with him. Be a true servant of the Lord. I'm calling out to the remnant. You see, the apostates, there will be some who will repent. But the true apostates who have been given over to a reprobate mind, this message will be like water rolling off of a duck's back. It says in the Bible, they want their ears tickled. And I don't give ear tickling messages. It also says that God will send them a strong delusion so that they would believe a lie. There are some people, no matter how clear those of us speaking truth can be, they will not hear it. They will not receive it. They have chosen to believe the lie. And that is sad. Their minds have been brainwashed by the lies so much that they cannot see the truth. You can hold it in front of them. You can show them proof. They won't accept it. When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be greatest shock for them, of course. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. 
uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. So everybody, let's go ahead and pray. Just a quick reminder for those of you who are subscribed, check your subscription and make sure that you're still subscribed. You may just have to come to my channel several times a week and check. Download the free app for the free show on Truth Hunters. Okay, that's a free app that is available on any Android or Apple device. It's on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Celeste Salome has a show on Truth Hunters. We don't know how long we'll be here on worldly social media. I say this every time. I don't know. As long as God allows. Okay, so get the Truth Hunters app. Those of you who have been sowing into this ministry, thank you and God bless you. I could not do this without your support. So I am dependent upon people's financial gifts to this ministry. So if you feel led or moved to help support this ministry, you can do so via my PayPal or my PO box. The information is on the screen and beneath the video in the video description and in the about section here on YouTube. Thank you again to those of you who have been giving, to those of you who can't give or you haven't been led to give. Thank you for your prayers and your love. I genuinely appreciate it. You can also help out greatly. If you can't do anything else, you can help out just by sharing and liking these videos. That just helps big time. It helps me fight the censorship. And more importantly, it spreads the truth so people can hear the truth because there is a starvation for hearing the truth right now. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just thank you and we praise you and we glorify and magnify your name. We are your humble servants, Heavenly Father, and I just thank you and praise you that you will just send your Holy Spirit to comfort the people who need comforting right now. Lord, I pray that you would unclog the ears and open the eyes of the people who cannot hear and cannot see, that they would believe the truth. Heavenly Father, I just thank you and praise you that you just move us, Father, light a fire under our seats. Motivate your people, Father, to dig into your word and to study it and to pray to you before they do for understanding and discernment. Heavenly Father, I also pray that your people will spend more time witnessing. There's people out there with different disabilities and different situations. Show them how they can be a witness for you in these end times. Maybe for some, it's just going to the grocery store and praying for you to lead them to someone that they can just help or do something kind for and just strike up a conversation. And even if they're rejected, they've still planted the seed. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you and give you honor, praise, and glory. You are a righteous and holy and awesome God, and we love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our body, and all of our mind. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Amen. All right. God bless all of you. If you have come onto the show during the premiere and you missed any of this show, you'll want to go back and rewatch it after it's done premiering. It'll stay here on my channel unless YouTube does something to it. So go back and watch from the beginning. Don't forget to share it. God bless all of you a whole bunch. I love you all. Keep praying for me and my family, for this ministry, for our sisters and brothers all over the world. And please remember to pray for your enemies, the lost, the hurting, the brokenhearted, the unrepentant the sorcerers, the idolaters, the idolaters, everybody pray, pray, pray. Time is very short. God bless all of you.